This video is not about us being smart asses. It's just me and the sound effects guy taking out some things about our workflow in Pro Tools that we think are worth sharing with you. That being said, let me welcome Sean. Hey Cactus, thanks for having me in your video. And let me play the intro. Let's go with the first tip. Let's start with removing unused audio files. There is a list on the right side and this can be a really long list if you don't clean it regularly. I use this feature on many occasions, for example after recording when certain takes are chosen and I want to make another copy of my session with just selected clips, or when after trying many different sound effects or music clips in the mix and they are still on the list and in the audio files folder. This saves space on the clips list and on your disk too, when you are copying every file during import. That's what I do and that's why I always try to keep it clean. First you go with Command Shift U and then Command Shift B or Control Shift U, Control Shift B on Windows. Always be careful. Remember, it's deleting files. Let's take a look at my Pro Tools and I'll show you my favorite tips for increasing your workflow. Templates are a great way to get a jump start on production. Avid has already created a handful of pre made templates for you to use, but you can also create your own. Once you have a session set up the way you want, you can simply go to File save as template and you can choose where you want to save it and you can include it in pro tools templates or you can select a location and save it somewhere else once you're ready to start your next project all you have to do is go create from template select the template that you created and you're on your way When you are not sure if deleting certain audio files or tracks is the best way for your project's future, you can also spare some space on your monitor and let your computer take a deep breath by making some plugins inactive and hiding chosen tracks. They will be still available on this list on the upper left side and you can turn them on back anytime. Until then, your edit window will look cleaner. Grouping tracks together will allow you to control multiple like tracks at the same time instead of having to make changes to everything. By pressing Command 7 or F6 and F7 combined, you activate so-called Smart Tool. It's on when these three blocks are highlighted. What it does is it lets you trim, select and move things on your timeline. You can also choose any of these tools separately, but Smart Tools just seems more convenient. Within this selection you can choose your trim mode, standard, TCE, which is a shortcut for time compression expansion, scrap or loop, and you can also choose your grabber tool. The setup I use most often is standard with time. Second one is with TCE, usually for too long voiceovers, editing and creative sound design. Smart Tool activates different tools depending on where the mouse cursor hovers. Trim activates at the beginning and at the end of a clip. You can make a fade when you are in the upper corners, hover over the top half of the region to select parts of a region and move using the grabber tool in the lower half of the region. Color coding your tracks by type is a great way to keep everything organized at a glance, especially if you're working in a large session. There is a quick way of creating new audio files in your session without bouncing, so it is not affected with any plugins you have turned on. For example, you have edited voiceover with proper gain and fades and you want to do one audio file from that for some specific reason, like give it quickly to the video editor or just prevent from moving your clips by mistake when they are placed perfectly on your timeline. You can select your clips and press Shift-Alt-3 to consolidate them into brand new clip. It will appear on the clips list and in your audio files folder. Using VCAs allows you to mix within a group 
and then still have overall control of that entire group. If you put your VCAs in a group of their own, you can also hide all of the other tracks and just show your VCAs. This will consolidate your session and make mixing a lot easier. There are few options of soloing your tracks in Pro Tools. Depending on the project or the moment you are with your mix, you can choose between Latch, X or N Momentary. Each of these three options could be useful depending on what you really need. Latch mode can combine many different tracks at once, XOR is for soloing only one and deactivating solo on previous one, and Momentary is active when pressing the solo button. Take the time to learn stock plugins. It's okay to use presets, but having an understanding of what the plugin is capable of will allow you to make subtle tweaks and adjust it to exactly how you want. This will also make expanding your plugin library a lot easier because now you'll have an understanding of what you're looking for. When I am doing ADRs, editing foley's or just playing with sounds that should be in sync with the video, I often use pre-roll feature for playback. I set it for around 1 to 2 seconds, highlight the clip I want to sync, or just put the playhead in the right place, and after hitting spacebar, Pro Tools is playing this additional few seconds before your mark. It helps when you want to hear bigger perspective quickly or compare two different scenes or mics with ease. You can turn pre and post roll on by hitting command K and turn it off the same way. Ctrl K on Windows. If you don't have an application like SoundMiner to help search your sound libraries, Pro Tools has one built in and it's called Workspace. Workspace allows you to search your libraries, audition clips, and then once you've found the right clip, you can simply drag that clip into your session. Another fancy feature that I use for checking if audio is in sync, but also for creative reasons, like quick check if any audio will suit my needs better if slowed down. By simply pressing shift and spacebar, you will play your audio slowed down. You can also start recording with slowed down playback. Learning keyboard shortcuts is an amazing time saver, and ProToolsKeyboardShortcuts.com is an amazing reference guide. But because there are so many different keyboard shortcuts in Pro Tools, I'm gonna share with you a couple of my favorites. If you're stuck working on a single screen, on Windows, Control equals, or on a Mac, Command equals, will allow you to switch back and forth between your edit window and your mix window. If you're just spotting a session, you can select an area and on Windows hold Shift Alt 3 or on Mac it's Shift Option 3 to create a silent clip in that space. Similarly to the ghost clips, you can also generate 1K tones by simply adding on Windows the Windows Start key or on Mac by adding the Control key to that configuration. Having a keyboard shortcut for creating 1K tones is really great if you're trying to create a 3 beep. It also comes in handy if you're working on something that needs a little bit of censoring. You should definitely subscribe to Cactus Sound because he is an absolute badass. You should definitely subscribe to Cactus Sound because he is an absolute badass. It's a function available in HD version of Pro Tools. It allows you to bounce from multiple sources at once. I use it when making TV commercials, for example. Before I start working on a commercial project, I do a research to know the technical specs. Usually it's minus 23 LUFS for television. What I do is I make multiple sends from my master aux, then I cut the volume down on this aux, later I can fix levels of each send, and now I have the preview setting at minus 6 or minus 9 dBFS, another send for final mix for the television in the EBU standard, and a send for the web upload which is close to 0 dB, which is around minus 13, 14 LUFS. I can choose my bounce sources in the bounce window and render all of them at once if there's a need for it. Using memory locations will allow you to jump around your session a lot easier.
Now, if you were to be working on another part of your session and you wanted to come back to that explosion, you know right where it is. Sometimes Pro Tools can act a little weird if you're working on multiple monitors. So if you want to extend your workspace across multiple screens, you can put your Pro Tools session in Windows mode and then simply drag your window out to the other monitor and this will allow you to separate your mix window from your edit window. And that's all we have for you today. Please subscribe to Sound Effects Guy channel and to my channel if you haven't yet. Uh, use the comment section to write down your favorite Pro Tools tips. And until next time. <laughs>